And welcome to the news from Bahrain Television with Esther Galoom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, met today with the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, the Shura Council Speaker, Ali Al Saleh, and a number of MPs in the presence of the former Representatives Council Speaker, Khalifa Al Dahrani. The Prime Minister asserted the importance of enhancing efforts to achieve the best interests of the people of the Gulf and Arab region. He urged support for all Gulf and regional efforts to reinforce Arab cohesion and achieve the public aspiration for unity. He confirmed Bahrain's keenness, led by His Majesty the King, to back all collective Arab and Islamic efforts to preserve a unified entity and prevent interference in countries' internal affairs. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also reviewed the cooperation and growing coordination between the executive and legislative authorities to serve the people and meet their aspirations. He appreciated the role of the Council of Representatives in legislation and monitoring, urging MPs to continue their national duty. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Gudbia Palace. After the meeting, the cabinet's general secretary, Dr Yasser Al Nasser, made a statement outlining the issues discussed. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed the importance of continuing to create opportunities for scientific and professional interaction and to enrich discussions that contribute to the development of innovative research and production methods that could benefit the oil industry amid the ongoing challenges. He highlighted the importance of events being held in this regard, mentioning the Middle East Geosciences Conference and Exhibition Geo 2016, which was opened earlier this month by the Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The Cabinet commended the success of the North Thunder military manoeuvres which were held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with the participation of 20 Arab and Islamic countries, including Bahrain. The Cabinet said that the drill sent a clear message to the world and demonstrated the unity of the Arab and Islamic nation in facing threats and terrorism and preserving security and stability. The meeting praised Saudi Arabia's achievement, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, in organising the drill, which was one of the largest in history. The Cabinet rejected the statement of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the OHCHR, which ignored Bahrain's numerous achievements and development and presented a false picture of the real situation in Bahrain which respects and protects human rights. It highlighted the effective participation of citizens in the decision-making process through constitutional institutions that are democratically elected in accordance with international standards. The Cabinet also pointed out that freedoms are guaranteed by the Constitution and the law, highlighting the independence and integrity of the judiciary. The meeting affirmed the importance of highlighting the measures taken by all countries of the world in accordance with their laws to protect society from violence and terrorist acts while preserving freedom of expression and opinion. The Cabinet considered the statement of the OHCHR as biased and lacking objectivity and correct information, describing it as clear interference in Bahrain's internal affairs and saying that it didn't reflect the positive cooperation between Bahrain and the OHCHR. The Cabinet expressed pride in Bahrain's success in overcoming all repercussions of the unfortunate events of 2011. Regarding government services, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the Ministry of Health to expand its programmes that bring in international doctors and medical experts to treat patients within Bahrain, commending the efforts of the Ministry in implementing the programme. His Royal Highness also directed the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning to pave the roads in Al-Eka area and to build road infrastructure and a rainwater drainage network. The Cabinet then discussed a number of memoranda listed on its agenda. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the provision of more job opportunities for citizens and improvement in the level of vacancies. He also urged continuing intensive efforts to lower the rate of unemployment and balance supply and demand amid the ongoing international and regional economic development so as to guarantee the capability of the labour market to create proper job opportunities for the people. In this regard, the Minister of Labour and Social Development said Bahrain's unemployment rate was 3.4%, adding that 6,000 citizens have been recruited in the private sector and there are around 6,200 vacant job opportunities. Regarding the issue of housing, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister ordered more efforts to provide the people with decent housing. The Cabinet reviewed progress on the housing plan laid down in the Government Action Plan. In the context of reforms accredited by the World Bank, the Cabinet approved increasing Bahrain's contribution in reforming the quota system that allows the voting power of developing countries to be increased. The Cabinet approved accrediting two agreements with the Government of Bangladesh, the first on encouraging and protecting investments, and the second on the avoidance of double taxation and prevention of fiscal evasion with regard to income tax. The meeting discussed a memorandum of understanding between the governments of Bahrain and Oman on mutual recognition of marine eligibility certificates issued to seafarers and maritime workers. The meeting also discussed a proposal to purchase old houses in residential areas to preserve social heritage and fabric. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister issued Edict 12 for this year, transferring the Director of Human and Financial Resources at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Jalal Hussein Ismail, to be Director of Human and Financial Resources at the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority. The edict also appointed the following at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Khalid Fathala Mohammed as Director of Industrial Development, Khaled Rabia Hussein 
Director of Registration, Nabil Rabia Mohammed, Director of Industrial Areas Operations, and Khalid Salman Al Qasimi as Director of Industrial Areas and Development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also issued Edict 13 for this year, appointing Farid Abdurrahman Abdullah as Director of Employee Performance and Relations at the Civil Service Bureau. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali al Ramehi opened today the production bazaar being held on the sidelines of the 14th Gulf Radio and Television Festival under the theme, A Unified Media Vision. The opening ceremony was also attended by His Majesty the King's Advisor for Information Affairs, Nabil al Hama, and the Director General of Gulf Radio and Television Corporation, Dr Abdullah Abu Ras. Mr al Ramehi affirmed the necessity of preserving Gulf identity by preserving its heritage and history. He expressed pleasure at the participation of over 600 media personnel and 300 programmes in the festival, marking a success indicator. He confirmed support for reinforcing joint Gulf cooperation, stressing that the GRTC aims to expand coordination from bilateral to multilateral to include all Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The four-day bazaar features 30 booths representing official and private channels and production companies. Regarding the decision by Gulf Cooperation Council countries to consider Hezbollah militias and their leaders, factions and groups as a terrorist organisation and the Tunisia declaration at the 33rd session of the Arab Interior Minister's Council on March the 2nd that condemned illegal activities by Hezbollah to destabilise the Arab region. In addition to the decision of the Arab Foreign Minister's Council during its 45th session on March the 11th to classify Hezbollah as a terrorist organisation, Several Lebanese residents have been deported from Bahrain after they were found to have links to or be supporters of Hezbollah. Moreover, strict legal measures will be taken against organisations and individuals, citizens or residents, whose involvement with terrorist organisations can be proven. Anyone in possession of images, slogans or symbols sympathising with terrorist groups or providing support through investment or commercial activities will also be dealt with through the law. These measures are part of Bahrain's commitment to fighting terrorism financing and money laundering in coordination with all GCC countries. The Interior Ministry stressed that people should be aware of the law that penalises cooperation with or spying for a terrorist organisation as per Article 12 regarding protecting the community against terrorist acts which stipulates that a prison sentence shall be the penalty for anyone who solicits any foreign-based society, association, organisation, group or gang that carries out a terrorist activity or who communicates therewith or with any person who acts to serve the interest of any such groups to commit either personally or through others terrorist activities against the Kingdom of Bahrain or who undertakes any terrorist activity against the interests of a foreign country inside the Kingdom or against the country's properties, resources, organisations or facilities abroad, or its delegations, missions, diplomatic representatives or citizens during their stay out of the country. A prison sentence of no less than five years and a fine of no less than 3,000 Bahraini dinars and no more than the amount requested, accepted or promised shall be imposed upon anyone who requests or accepts for himself or another any gift, benefit or promise of any of the above or through any of the aforesaid organisations or anyone who acts in the interest thereof to commit any of the acts referred to in the first paragraph. The penalty shall be doubled if the offender is a civil servant or person charged with a public service. A prison term of no less than five years and a fine of no less than 2,000 Bahraini dinars and no more than the amount given, promised, accepted or offered shall be inflicted upon anyone who gives, promises, accepts or offers any of the above with the intent of committing any of the acts referred to in the first paragraph without accepting his offer. The Interior Ministry said that it would continue through coordination with concerned authorities to fight all Hezbollah terrorist activities through all possible means and continues to work with its worldwide partners to counter terrorism and extremism. A delegation from the Representatives Council is participating in the first workshop on developing a commercial law programme in Malaysia, which started yesterday. 
Joining us from Kuala Lumpur is head of the lower civil court, Judge Mohammed Al Muada. Good evening, Mr. Mohammed. Welcome to Bahrain Television. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. First of all, can you tell us the purpose of your visit to Malaysia? Actually, my participation at the insolvency and contract enforcement capacity building study tour came as a part of Kingdom of Bahrain cooperation with the U.S. Department of Commerce, Commercial Law Development Program, CLDP. Um, the main aim of this study tour is to bring together judicial members, government officials, private sector representatives, member parliaments, and civil society representatives from the from all GCC. And uh, Mr. So this, this is the main purpose. Yeah. How will this participation contribute to the development of, of Bahrain's parliamentary experience? Of, of course, uh, as I tell you, the main objective uh, of the event is to gain a working knowledge of the best practices in modern international arbitration law for the insights of the Malaysian arbitrators and attorneys, uh, a better understanding of the relationship between public courts and arbitral institutions, especially in regard to enforcement of arbitral awards, exposure to the key components in creating and sustaining high-quality national arbitral institutions, and how to respective governments can positively influence this process, the capacity of the judiciary to promptly, fairly, and predictably resolve uh, contractual disputes in local courts and institutions, and, of course, an understanding of how to fairly manage business insolvency proceedings. Um, actually, uh, all countries um, are uh, reforming uh, insolvency uh, laws, and we are trying to reach uh, to the best reform uh, and international standards uh, to such law in our country also. Thank you very much, Judge Amwada, and we wish you all the best with your stay in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for joining us on Bahrain Television. And now it's time for the latest business news with Danielle. Thanks very much, Esther. Very good evening and welcome to the business news here on Bahrain Television. The chairman of the Bahrain Bourse, the BHB, Yusuf Abdullah Hamoud, today issued a resolution in respect of the creation of a real estate investment trust or REITs market at Bahrain Bourse and adding it to the markets at BHB. REITs, licensed by the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, can be listed and traded by investors in the secondary market in accordance to the general trading guidelines in BHB's rulebook. More details about the market and trading mechanisms are expected to be announced later. Meanwhile, the Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,151.16 points, a decrease of 0.5 points below yesterday's closing level. Although the fall was felt in the investment sector, that sector was also the most traded in, representing 70.75% of total share value traded. In total today, there were 13 transactions involving 1,354,445 shares worth 1,480,070 Bahraini dinars.